And in terms of um, where things have gone in the last, uh, you know, I've spent kind of about three and a half years at Nokia, mm. big industrial company with a lot of kind of disciplines kind of lined up next to each other with kind of like people writing the songs and then giving a little bit of that. And that was when it, that's when things failed. When things worked really well, it's a bit of a truism, a bit of a cliche, is when everybody got in the room and disciplines were checked in at the door. Um, but the thing that's really amazing and awesome and terrifying because, uh, you know, it, it's kind of the beginning of the end for my employability in some ways is, is that the younger software engineers who are coming through right now are awesome designers. They just, because they've understood the grain of this material, this ma the material of interaction, which is, which is kind of the code that makes behaviours in the so things that are in our coming, world. they're not just sort of geeks kept in a cupboard, they're actually no. able to make it look I mean, you go, if you go down the road to uh, Last FM, right? Who here uses Last FM? Who doesn't? Okay, you need to use it, it's really good. Um, <laughs> but you go down there and there are people, you know, there, there, there are all of these amazing people who have no idea what to call themselves. Yeah. But they're creating something amazing and they don't, you know, they, they don't really know if they're designers or developers or coders or business people or anything. They've just got an idea for a service which they're continually developing and actually sort of um, has a little bit of a life of its own because they wanted it to be like that yeah. and they wanted they wanted to just see where it went they didn't they, their feet did leave the ground yeah. um, and they sort of you know Richard Richard, uh, Richard Jones who, who started it started it as as his PhD subject um, writing a bit of code that um, kind of uh, captured data about the music you were playing and then matched it up to other people who might like the same music as you got bought by CBS for like um, several gazillion mega dollars or whatever it was um, six months ago um, and to come back to the point there's, there's a group of people coming through right now kind of who are about you know 24 25 who've you know 10 years younger than me um, who, who have got this new creole of I'm kind of an interaction designer I'm kind of a designer I'm kind of a developer I don't really classify like that because I make stuff with this clay that I'm, I kind of enjoy working with and I've got it under my fingernails and I know what to do with it just instinctively and uh, my goodness me, working with them is amazing and, and there must be other like hybrid mutant creatures coming through in mm. worlds I don't know about like branding and advertising and fashion and I, I don't know what they are. And, I think it's I, interesting really where they're coming from. I think it's interesting the point of where they're coming from because I'm seeing what you're seeing. They're coming through maths, they're coming through shapes, they're coming through form. I'm not seeing so much, sorry Tim, I'm not seeing so much coming through words. I'm not seeing it coming through colour, so to speak. Mm. Uh, grids, well, you know, it depends how you look at it. It's system thinkers. But these guys are leaning on their craft a lot, aren't they? They know the tools. Mm. But that's using a, they've got a bit of an advantage. The, the, I'm thinking now of people who use processing. You know, like this is particularly something we've thrown around in the studio. The tools that people use when they're learning, you know, are pretty much determined by Adobe. Yeah, but look, in no, terms but of creating. I mean, look what processing is. Processing, yeah, no, processing in itself is, is a is is a is is a Creole object. It, is a, yeah. it was a, 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 a who knows what processing is. Yeah, lots of people. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it was deliberately a, a language, a, a programming language, de designed to be used by people who enjoyed manipulating form and light and colour yeah. and behaviour. It was a programming language designed by Casey Ruiz and Ben Fry and lots of other people now um, to build that bridge. And it has built that bridge, and the, the, the after effect of it, the ripple effect of it, mm. um, is amazing. Massive. I mean, we're going to walk around a lot of it tonight. Um, and, and I think kind of I'm sort of interested in where those other bridges, you know, what, what bridges are being built right now by people either making kind of um, making business bridges or technical bridges or language bridges or yeah. disciplinary bridges, which we're going to feel the kind of aftershock of in the next sort of three, four, five years when people come through having played with those things. Perhaps it's in music. It's also it's open source, isn't it? So it's also free. That processing. Well, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's quite a big deal, that. Well, because import it means importantly, I mean, the, the thing that people miss out about open source is that it's free to be improved. Yeah. 
I mean, that's the crucial thing about the open source model is that it's free for anybody to improve it. But for a which school to teach it, Jeff? Yes. Well, yes. It's just, you know, it, yeah. it means it's not limited by the people who can afford it. No. Talking about the growth of urbanisation yeah. in the, you know. Yeah, yeah. so we've, I and, think we're going to so see some interesting Maybe we're going to see more of a flood of it coming from overseas because at the moment we're still in a mindset of Adobe and yeah. stuff that determines what we can output in a silo. I'm interested in this phrase you use of a business bridge and, and, and the collaboration in, in uh, the design conversations often uh, is about other so-called um, cre creatives and I think there's a lot of lip service paid to that so just talking as a writer quite often people will talk about collaborating with writers and photographers and illustrators and filmmakers and whoever but actually what that means for them is that they will bring you in at a particular point, you will work together under very controlled circumstances and then you'll go away again. And um, I mean, sometimes that works, but I think that the, the sort of dirty, difficult, hard, uncontrollable, unpredictable bit of collaboration when you all get in a room and talk about the fundamentals from the beginning um, often, often doesn't get used by um, agencies. But there's another aspect here, which is about collaborating with clients, this great other this great sort of um, terrifying group of people, you know, that have been referred to earlier, the chief executive, who, um, who, who uh, you know, would visit the ad agency every six months to kind of get a little bit of magic from, from behind the scene. And actually, I think it's uh, incredibly interesting things can happen when you get in a room with clients and uh, work creatively with them and you all respect each other's imagination and ability to to create um, and rather than creating these incredibly false borders uh, with the client community when suddenly you go to present to them uh, and pull back these curtains and show them what you've all been doing. But how much do you feel they can actually participate in this world because the world that we're, the picture we're painting of it is of one which is highly skilled, <coughs> highly specialised learn it, the cracks that they're supposed to be in. I think, I think this, this highly skilled things. I mean I think you know, to be good at anything, you've got to be, quote unquote, highly skilled. But change is happening so quickly now; it's actually a benefit to having not had a legacy of skills with you. And it's quite helpful sometimes to be highly skilled in the fresh things that are going on. Yeah. And um, but I think one of the so how would you judge well, I sort of think you know, I, I don't know, but I sort of think compare. The threats to advertising agencies aren't from design agencies or from other people. That's so that the threats are coming from outside. It's young people doing things. I mean, that's that's where interesting stuff is happening. I mean, one of the things I'm sort of interested in hearing all of this is how you think about people who've set up companies that have changed things. And uh, one of the threats to existing businesses is how unmotivated people are by money. That's a massive threat. Because if you've got a group of people who are motivated by doing something well and getting famous for it, you know, they'll take radically different decisions than a very commercial business will. You know, so when you're Google, and you say, everyone says Google had a better search engine, Google's search engine wasn't profoundly different, but they had less ads on their page. So you went, gosh, that's white. It looks nicer, I'll go there. And they were just not, they were threatening to the status quo because they would want to do something brilliantly well, and they wanted to get really, really, really well known for it.